it's basically like a like a freestyle routine. You do some rails, you do some jumps, you do different weird things, and it's really interesting. And Max Perot gold medal winning, I think Canada's first gold of the Olympics, mm -hmm. which was really really awesome to watch. Strange how Canada is really good at the Winter Olympics. Olympics I know, right? <laughs> Crazy how that works. Uh, let's go ahead. The Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl week. Oh, it is Super yeah, Bowl. It is no, Super, Bowl it week. Is Super Bowl week. And uh, we have to talk about both teams. And since it is the biggest game of the season, and I am a nerd, I spent time putting together pretty much a season interview for both the Rams and the Bengals. We're starting with the Rams. Finish the season 12 and 5, NFC West champions. Um, I think you got to start this thing back with the Rams all the way uh, pretty much a year ago. January 30th, 2021, the Rams trade Jared Goff, two first-round picks and a third-round pick to the Lions for Matthew Stafford. Uh, we talked about this on this show when it happened. I thought it was an insane price to pay, like a former number one overall pick, two first-round picks, and a third-round pick. For granted, another, another former number one overall pick, but a guy who's approaching 40 and... We didn't know if he was going to be able to be as good as he has. We, we had no idea, and it, it definitely was a – like people talk about the Brady and Belichick thing, like, oh, who – was it Brady or was it Bill? And and now we're realizing, was it Stafford or was it the Lions? Well, it was the Lions. <laughs> it was the Lions that were that bad. The Stafford. first one to get out of the purgatory that is the Detroit Lions franchise, and he's in a Super Bowl the first year I, I know, like, like he, he deserves it. The guy, like I said last week, or might have been two weeks ago – he never said anything bad. He he, he was blue collar. He showed up to Detroit every single year, <laughs> coming home from his California summer home to, that he that he stayed in, yeah. and went to good old Detroit with his family and stuck it out and never said a bad thing. And at least the Lions did something right and finally did one of their players the right play. Because look, Jared Goff is not the Lions' quarterback of the future. This, there's no doubt about that. But he did at least probably one of the. Uh, but probably the best quarterback in franchise history. Uh, I'll, I'll put that point out because the Lions don't have many. And and Stafford. He's he's going up against Stafford right now. The best quarterback. Of no, 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 no. I'm talking about Stafford being the best quarterback. Oh, in yeah, history. no, he is. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were talking about Goff. No, 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 no. I'm I said it's, God, it's Stafford that Goff. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about Stafford. Stafford. The best Lions quarterback in NFL history, or in their history, and finally gets a chance with a better system, with an all-pro receiver, a, a damn good defense, and, and look what happens. Like, it's, he, like I said, he has done nothing wrong, but showed up to work, he finally gets to pay off, and who could have not written a better story if you were him? He's the reason why there's portions, it, if, if Matthew Stafford and Vaughn were on the on the Los Angeles Rams, there would be like 45 people in Los Angeles County, and then all of the other cities in the AFC North, and that would be the only people Thanks rooting out. against the Cincinnati yeah. Bengals. Matthew Stafford is the reason why Detroit and a lot of the Midwest and Georgia, because he is yeah, a, a, a Georgia, bulldog Georgia, guy. Yeah. Um, talk about the, the SEC is just going hard on themselves right now yeah. because okay. they have the two starting quarterbacks in the in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, the Rams also, I mean, they didn't, that wasn't the only big thing that happened. They acquired Odell Beckham off of waivers on November 1st, and that's also the day that they traded a second and a third round pick for former Super Bowl Super Bowl 50 MVP Von Miller. The man, the myth, the legend, Von Miller. Like the jersey. Said, and and I'll, I'll, obviously I could go on and on about Von. I'll get to that in a second. OBJ, one of the best pickups this team has, ever, has had this year to get them where they are. Losing Robert Woods, I think it was Bobby the week Trees. before week before they acquired Robert Odell Trump. would have been an honestly a huge deflator. Mm -hmm. You go out obviously Robert Woods probably does more in that offense for them than OBJ. OBJ you add in a red zone threat and a guy that will just go out and catch the ball and under under a coaching staff and team where he just wants to win, that's a different type of guy. It's the first and, time in his career that he's at a place where he just wants to win. Exactly, and, and it's 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 showing. And he, he told his dad to shut show. down his YouTube account. I know, which is crazy that he even passed. No that. more talking shit, Dad. Okay, I'm in a place I got, where I enjoy. I got, I got a decent quarterback, and I get to live in LA. I got Not this coach. He that. schemes, and and it gets me open. He gets me the ball. Yeah, I get to play alongside so. Cooper Cup and the the most talented. Receiver football, possibly one of the most talented receivers we will ever see play this game. That's that's a crazy thing. We'll talk. I'll talk a bit more about Cooper Cup, uh, but then also afterwards. Jan well, let's talk about the impact Von Miller did have on this defense because Von opens so much up for the team. 
er, er, earlier, it was just Leonard Floyd and Aaron Donald, which is, is That's good. good. That's good. That's really, really good. good. Vaughn is a different level. It's, Even though Vaughn is not the Vaughn that we saw play in Super Bowl 50 because there are some plays, like, plays where he would finish or dip a little bit lower. He doesn't quite have that same bend. He's getting old. He's getting old, yeah. That's but he happened. is, there's that three or four plays where he does that dip and rip and he beats the shit out of your quarterback. And he still is one of the fastest players off the ball you'll ever see. Like, the, the factor in, and look, Donald, we could argue and say that, that Donald is the best defensive player of this the generation. Most, I think he's the most dominant player we've seen in the NFL. For exactly. And, and, we'll, and you're talking about a defensive line that has, or a pass rush slash run defense where we'll have two Hall of Famers on it. There's no doubt Donald will be in. Vaughn has solidified himself, in my opinion, as that as well. And at what Vaughn has done for this team, like I said, the pure presence of no, like I, it's so weird he's wearing number forty. But the pure presence of number forty being on one side of the ball and having seeing number ninety nine in the middle scares the shit out of anybody. Because when you're an inf- look, I was an interior lineman for a little bit, and, and obviously I didn't play it for as long as you did. I was an interior lineman for my whole. But life. when you had a stud in the middle that you had to worry about, you would throw double teams at him. You you hedge toward him. When you have two guys, a guy on the outside that will school your left tackle, school your right tackle if he's not paying attention, and then a guy that's going to bull rush your ass straight into the quarterback, that is a problem for the best offensive line of football. And and. and it's like I said. I it, it's it's bittersweet because obviously I wish Vaughn was a Bronco for life. And and but what one one thing I'm realizing in all this is that Broncos know how to do something. Like, I'm gonna chew the Broncos horn as much as possible. And I got and I got a chance to talk about them. They're a Super Bowl week. I might as well. Broncos do one thing better than almost every single team in football, and that's treat their players right. Whether well, it be Peyton giving him Super Bowl. Keeping him around the team, whatever it may be. John L.A., yes, obviously all the shit that's happened the past couple of years. But after a Super Bowl, keeping him around. Are we sure he's TV, not drinking somewhere? I, I know. T- TV, all that. And look, Von Miller, going to be a ring of favor. Going to be one of those guys that forever going to be an S in, your, in the storybooks of the Denver Broncos. You send him to a team where the chance to, know to win another ring, it couldn't have asked much better. And it's, it's funny, all the interviews on Monday as we're talking about this, people asked ask him, I was like, did you think you'd be here again? Because in reality, he thought he'd be in Denver forever. And obviously, and obviously, unless this team gets Aaron Rodgers, no one thought that this this team would be back where they were. And he he said, no, I didn't. He was like, I want to be in Denver my whole life. I will be a Bronco my whole life. But I'm just working in L.A. right now. And I love that part of it. And, and look, I know you're a Bengals fan, but doesn't matter doesn't matter to me what colors Vaughn wears. I will always be a Vaughn Miller fan because of what he did. We'll let that slide because we've been friends a long time. That, that's really, I'm not hating on you. I'm I, just got, saying, I got that it. Is, I, I got I, I, I'm not saying anything no Broncos fan will ever say wrong. But I will always root for Vaughn Miller no matter what colors he wears. And that is fact. If you're a Broncos fan and you are not rooting for Vaughn Miller at all, yes, you could say, well, a Bengals good store, jump over this. If you're a Broncos fan and you're not rooting for Vaughn Miller to have a game of his life, maybe you don't want them to win, but not, but you want you can Vaughn have a good Miller game. to do well, you, can, you can do that very easily. Jeffrey Simmons had a pretty good game against the Bengals, and the Bengals ended up Exactly, playing. and you were facing your longtime left tackle. You love Andrew Whitworth. I do. You love Andrew Whitworth. You don't want him to see him win, but you wouldn't mind seeing him have a good game. It is bitter. It's so bittersweet I'm having, having that situation. Yeah. No, uh, <clears throat> Vaughn is Vaughn is what Vaughn is. Vaughn's going to be an issue. Vaughn makes that entire situation an issue. But honestly, the biggest issue, and we don't even have to really mention it, Aaron Donald is the biggest issue on this entire team. He's the most dominant player in the NFL, offense or defense, at his position or otherwise. It's it's kind of insane what he's able to do to grown men. January 7th, Cam Akers is activated after returning from a ruptured Achilles tendon. I think that was big. He had a great game, but it's mainly big because now he's a presence back. The people like that injury used to be a year. People have started been able to come back from it in about nine months, but nine months not fully healthy. He did it in about six, and, and that's fully healthy. And and that's kind of you know, we, you got to pick out X factors. I think these two teams, you could say the Rams are more talented, but they're fairly close. You got to pick out the X factors as to what's going to make a difference. And the Rams thinking that they have. Destiny on their side with Cam Akers coming back the way that he did and Matt Stafford being with them now and, and getting himself to the Super Bowl, that, that does play a little bit into it. So Cam Akers, he's a presence in, in the backfield. 
I think he could give the game away, honestly, just with his play on the field because he almost did it earlier in the playoffs. But his presence outside of his play on the field is going to be a bigger X factor. It's that fresh leg we were talking about with Derrick Henry that we thought he had. Cam Akers is the definition of fresh legs. He, you know, he hasn't had anywhere in Terrence legs. He was rehabbing from week one. Yeah. Like, he was getting ready because he knew, well, if we get to the playoffs, maybe I got a chance to play. That's all he needed to hear. And the man, like I said, he, he's had a few mistakes here and there, and there's no doubt there's that it's showing that he is, is still rusty. But if he gets going at the right time, but a running back with fresh legs, like, look, people – when it, talk, when it comes to running backs, it comes to offensive linemen and the interior guys. It's the guys who have been able to last long enough because at some point, taking all those hits throughout a full 17-game season now, it is and four or three postseason games. Yeah. It's a little bit it, – it, 20 games is a lot. It is a lot. That much punishment for nearly 20 straight weeks is a lot. And what these guys do, it's about who can who, – who has the legs underneath them to play one more week before the – not 48, 60 minutes, play 60 more minutes. <laughs> now, basketball season, yet, yeah, yeah, no, it's that's almost. That's you go, you got a week left. Um, and then the final kind of acquisition that the Rams made, January 12th, they re-signed Eric Weddle to the practice squad, and he's been starting for them at safety on this playoff run. I, I will add one more thing in here. The thing that happened last year that, that was the huge addition was obviously Ramsey. That that obviously getting having, honestly, Jalen Ramsey has not played well in the playoffs. He he hasn't. I, I I will agree, but then again, he is facing the best receivers in football. <laughs> Look he's at got him. another, and he's got, and there's no doubt that he will be facing another tough test. And right, and, and and wow, I don't think he's, he's, like all three of those Jamar, guys. Either, all, all three of them doesn't matter. Boyd he, Higgins and Jamar Chase, all three have very good matchups against Jalen Ramsey. And the thing that helps him so much is obviously the pass rush of inside, and that that helps so much. But it's and and if Ramsey can dig down deep, I, I have no doubt that he can lock up one side of the field. But that's that's when he wants to do it. And uh, I think I have you know we watched, we did the game on color cast last year when they played the Packers, and we saw what Devontae Adams did to Jalen Ramsey. It's not like I'm just coming out there and saying it for my own sake that he doesn't play well in the playoffs. He doesn't play well against big-time receivers, or at least that's what he's shown. I think that he's going to be better than what we saw against Devontae Adams and even so far on this playoff run because, remember, Mike Evans almost single-handedly made the comeback over Jalen Ramsey. That's true, yeah. When that Tampa Bay game was happening. So I have faith, but Jalen Ramsey is he's at least veteran presence along with a guy like Eric Weddle and a guy that's been – he, you can tell he wants to win. Like, yeah. All Jalen Ramsey wants right now is to be able to win a Super Bowl because he talks an, an enormous amount of shit. And if he wins a Super Bowl, he'll be able to talk even more. Uh, I have the the season kind of broken down into quarters. I'll talk about we'll talk about their best quarter of the season and their worst quarter of the season for both teams. And the best quarter of the season for the Rams was that second month of the season. They won at Seattle, at New York, against Detroit, and against Houston. So they went four and zero in the second month of the season. Um, and it was – that was at, at the point, if you remember, we were kind of talking about the Rams as a, a – we were talking about the NFC West as the sneaky best division in football, and we were talking about the Rams as a possibility with Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford in the breakfast club. Who was going to stop this team? They were able to score a million points and be able to beat everybody. We were – I think that was when more, most of the people who penciled the Rams into the Super Bowl – that was when they were doing it. The, the one argument I'll have against that is because this this part of the season was a part of the season that went under the radar. This team went under the radar because there's another undefeated team still, still in their division during this time. And it was the Arizona Cardinals. And to me, that, that last month of the season is where we showed who they were. Yes, the loss of the 49ers happened, but they had won the division. Hmm. Would they have liked to win another game to get the three seed? Probably. But then they would have had to face. Actually, I don't know how I would have figured it out. But they would have probably had. To, they would, they would have, have just got an extra home playoff game. An extra home playoff game, which really, out, which I mean, they I think that three. they were playing. I mean, <laughs> they, they were. We, they played. They ended up getting three. They were playing their best, and the 49ers flat beat them in that game. That was. The 49ers were playing for their lives. That's true, but I, I, I think that's like the playoffs and and. You, you go into Arizona and you beat them, which is a huge win. Seattle obviously fell off a little bit. But that Baltimore win, like it's – look, no Lamar, that's a huge difference. But you – three gritty or road wins set you up perfectly to host 
guaranteed one, and now you get two more, or you had one in the conference championship, and you got, and you got one more in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and they bounced back from the worst month of that, that they had in their season where they lost to Tennessee, San Francisco, and Green Bay all in a row. That's their longest losing streak. They went on two five- to six-game winning streaks of the season, so very successful. And then in the postseason, obviously, uh, wild card round 34-11 to over the Cardinals to beat them twice in the year. Uh, Tampa 30-27 to on the last play of the game. Willie Gay made the game-winning field goal. And then San Matt Francisco, Gay, Matt Gay, Matt Gay. Willie, Willie Gay is a linebacker, I think, for the Chiefs. Something, yeah. Somewhere. He's somewhere in the Rolodex. Uh, and then San Francisco in the conference championship, 20-17. to You did mention this is the first time in history the team will be playing their conference championship and the Super Bowl in their home stadium. Second time in two years that the host uh, city is yeah, also and, being played yeah, in the there. Super Bowl from now on will be hosted at, at Jerry's World yep. so that no team ever will be able to host the Super Bowl again. People, <laughs> I'm just, home you know, the best thing about this weekend is that you could have been able to, you used to be able to say play it in Cincinnati because the Bengals will never be able to play there. Yeah, except there's no indoor facilities and you'd be playing in the snow. <laughs> there is no indoor facilities. <laughs> I mean, you can go play you'd have to walk across, Cincinnati, yeah. You'd have to walk across the street from the locker room to the actual stadium. you got to pay for your own Gatorade and bring yeah. your own jockstrap as well. Uh, Paul, Mike Brown just doesn't spend any kind of money. The the stat leaders, Matthew Stafford, in the regular season, uh, 4,800 yards, 41 touchdowns, 17 interceptions in the postseason. He's got 905 yards, six touchdowns, one interception. I will say, we were talking about him in that little bit of a losing streak as a possibility of the reason why this Rams team doesn't achieve what they should be able to. And it, give him credit in the playoffs, he has not cost this team a whole bunch. That one interception was bad, but they were able to overcome it. Should have thrown the second interception to Tart, but... You know, could have, would have, should have. Close, is, close why, only matters in horseshoes and hand There's grenades. a reason why corners play defense. Yeah. Uh, he's been absolutely on fire for them. And then Cooper Cup as well. We said. The triple crown winner. That's yeah. all you need to say. His, his, his regular winner. season stats 145 catches, 1,947 yards, 16 touchdowns. He averaged 114 receiving yards a game. Just, just nuts. You can't cover them. Who is different? You can't cover him. And the Bengals are going to have their hands full. Uh, Good old Eli Apple <laughs> and Von Bell. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm interested to see what they're gonna. Oh do. man, I, I'm gonna tell you. Luana Rumo has yeah. your ha, has his hands full. Oh, all, all I'm Lou saying. Luana just has to take away one weapon. Go ahead. All I'm gonna say is you better have Jesse Bates over the top on it and deal every single time he is in a route. Cooper Cup. Or yeah, that's, wrong wide receiver. Wow, I don't know what I just said. Adam Thielen. Oh wow, yeah, wow, wow. definitely <laughs> completely wrong. Co yeah, Cooper Cup. We better have him over Cooper Cup every single time down the field. I, because yeah. because I'll tell you right now, Eli Apple is one on one coverage. Cooper Cup. Stafford is just going to give him the ball every fucking time, and it's going to be a long day for anyone who's a Cincinnati fan. It's true. It's true. I think that really what they should do is the scheme that they had against the Chiefs in the second half, and this is getting further into the, the Bengals than I wanted to, that's what they should be playing against Cooper Cup. But it doesn't really matter. In the postseason, uh, 25 catches, 386 yards, four touchdowns. Um, and then obviously we talked about Aaron Donald. He had 84 tackles at, from defensive tackle. He was a team sack leader with 12 and a half sacks. He also had four pass deflections and four forced fumbles. Jalen Ramsey is a presence from the corner position. I think he's an all-pro, first or second team all-pro. Sure yeah. 77 tackles, 16 pass deflections, four interceptions. Kind of like Revis. Not, he has lower stats than a lot of the other corners. Like He doesn't have the amount of interceptions that Trayvon Diggs has, but I will also tell you this, he has given up less 40-plus yard touchdowns than Trayvon Diggs has given up. So Jalen Ramsey, uh, I, I, Ramsey is a great player and, and should be – talked about as a great player but he really he has yet to do anything in the really big moments so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him uh, and obviously Sean McVay fifth year as the Rams head coach he's 55 and 26 six and three in the postseason has won two NFC championships and lost the Super Bowl to the New England Patriots back in 2018 13 to three got outclassed by the master and uh, got that was that, Brady's it, it, sixth ring and it was the it was the uh, 
guy trying to face the, the, the ultimate master in Bill Belichick, and now he gets to face a guy who coached under his staff. And basically, if it wasn't for McVay, Zach Taylor, or, yeah, Zach Taylor wouldn't have got the job. I, I would have these can't even remember my coach. You can't Zach even Taylor wouldn't have got a job in Cincinnati. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was surprising when Zach Taylor got his job in Cincinnati. You're so surprised that he kept his job this long. I am. Because you were about to have his I head am. off last offseason. But I was, there's another point being made this morning when I was listening to the, the, the Denver station. Think about the coaches. Like It's a good I, I 30% don't... of the coaches right now in the NFL are under that Shanahan tree. I know. I was going to talk about this later, but I might as well do it now. The Mike Shanahan coaching tree, let's all, it, it is – a third of the league. There, so I'll, I'll pull it up right now. San Francisco, Kyle Shanahan. You have and look the tree. Obviously, maybe they coach under Mike, but it's it falls down. Then you have Robert Sala, the yeah. Jets. Mike McDaniel now, Dolphins. Um, Matt Lafleur, Green Bay. You know Mike McDaniel weighs one hundred forty six pounds. Yeah, I know. He he also went to Smoky Hill, by the way. <laughs> Sean McVay, Rams. Obviously, Zach Taylor, Bengals. Um, Oh man, Daniel Hackett falls under that tree. Matt, Matt, Matt or Getsy. Matt LaFleur, Getsy. Yeah. like they're half the league. And talk about a coach that I have no idea how he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. The guy's won two Super Bowls, and his offense right now is literally run by half the league. Has he been retired? <laughs> he's been, he's, yeah, he's been retired for officially retired long yeah. enough because he wasn't officially retired. He was rumored to come back this season. He was rumored. I remember that. I remember, the, I, remember, I remember the last time the Broncos were searching for a head coach. Oh, it, it was, was 2019. I think it was 2019. It was yeah. brought up as a as a series. I mean, he hasn't coached since since the Commanders were named the Redskins, and that's, true. and that's when RG three was there. So it's been a it's been a minute. I think it's about time. Yeah, it probably should be time. Um, overall, I think the Rams they've earned their spot in the Super Bowl. They earned their NFC Championship. They were. Like preseason darlings a little bit. There are people thinking that this was when McVay was going to prove himself, or at least they've made. And then you look, throw in their off season moves, and you're like, wow, this team is like, we need to win a Super Bowl now. Who gives a fuck about three months from now, or three weeks from now, or three days after the Super Bowl? I need to win a Super Bowl, and then I'll be fine. So that's what this Los Angeles Rams team has done. They're in the Super Bowl for a reason. Um, and and they're going to be a tough out. I, I, obviously, sitting here as a Bengals fan. I can you can tell where my bias is going to lean, but the Rams are going to be a tough game. Yeah, it would have been much easier. You you would have been the they're betting, the worst matchup of the two. You would have been the betting favorite against San Francisco. I'm, I I 100 percent agree. You would have been the yes. betting favorite against San Francisco. You're given four and a half. The Rams are given right now four and a half. I'm I'm encouraged that it's. I think it started at three and a half, and I think it's only gone up one. Yeah. I'm encouraged by that. I'm because the. The one thing that I, that you can't have, especially at a stage like this, is the disrespect. So, and not it, everybody's not even nobody's really saying that this is going to be a blowout. Nobody's no. predicting that these they, two they, teams they, are. Everyone's right now like, like look, obviously L.A. being in a Super Bowl, it's great for business. But for, for fuck's sake, no one knows how to promote a Super Bowl with a Cincinnati team better than the NFL. Like everyone, like there could be more hype around this Super Bowl because of all the talent around the field. Talk about. A guy that's looking to make history in a three-year span of a Super Bowl or a Super Bowl, a national championship, and a Heisman. And you look at a guy that left the most forbidden and, and basically bad, rotten franchise in sports history, the Detroit Lions, going to win a Super Bowl. And you have both those guys going off against one another. It's one of those things where, yes, you're a Bengals fan, but... You can't like feel bad for Matt Stafford. You're happy that he's doing well and he left somewhere bad. You don't want him to win, but you you're happy that he's actually doing well for himself as he left. This is the only matchup where I could say I don't. I I would like to see the Bengals blow them out. Yeah. It would be better for me in my heart. But I want this to be as good of a game as possible. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's the second most thing that I'm rooting mostly for. First being the Bengals <laughs> winning the Super Bowl, obviously. But I want a good game, and I think that we have a really good shot. Had a good game.